joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. The glory of God is in this place, y'all. Glory to God. God said, he said, stand still and see the salvation of the living God right now. The, the anointing of God, the holiness of God is, is before you. God is walking in the midst of you. Under, you're under the shadow right now, the shadow of the Almighty. And if you'll just let go and you'll just let, and you'll just, you'll step out of your own way right now, you just might find some relief today. You just might find a change today. You just might find God standing in the midst of you right now. Standing in the, in the hallows of the, the Almighty God. Standing in the Holy of Holies. If you'll just stand today, and when you've done all you know to do, stand and know that He is stand and know that He is God and God alone. And besides Him, there is no other. God's waiting to do a work on you right now. If you have your Bibles, turn to John, the 17th chapter. Just one scripture today. John 17, 13. John's waiting. The, the, the Bible says that God is waiting. Those who wait upon the Lord, He's going to renew their strength. You're going to mount up with wings as eagles. And you're going to run and not be weary and walk and not faint. Can I tell you something, Aggie? God's waiting on you right now. Wayne, God is waiting. He's waiting to pour His Spirit out on all flesh. He's waiting for what? For you to anticipate. To anticipate the glory of God. To anticipate the sustaining authority of God that is, that is sitting at his throne on His throne right now. The Bible said God's throne is is forever and for, I'm getting out of my way today. God is forever and forever. A set, his throne is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness. To those who what? To those who choose good and reject evil. If you love good and you hate evil, God's ready to work on your behalf. God, you know, he says, he says in Psalms 45 that he is ready to do what? To pour out the oil of gladness upon you. To set you above all your peers. If you're ready to step out, if you're ready to change your heart, change your way. And you know, I just feel that by the Holy Ghost right now. God said, you know what? And I, 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 I neglected to do it. God said, just shake your flesh off right now. Just shake the flesh off into the fire right now. Lord, let them have ears to hear what you've called them to hear today. Let them have eyes to see what you've called them to see today. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, I break the chains that, have, that bind them. Lord, I break the circumstances. I ask you to bind the circumstances of life over against them, Father, right now. Open the prison doors today so you can set the captive free. Lord, loose them. You said whatever we bind on earth is bound. So right now, Lord, I bind, I bind all the, the flesh. I bind the, the, the cares of life and, and, and all the things of the world that has tried to attack them this week already. Everything, every, no weapons formed against them are going to prosper this day. And any tongue that has risen against them, Father, Lord, I condemn it right now in Jesus' name. And I, st and I, st and I, come, I step, step forward today in the power of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because you're, you're ready to anoint, Lord, you're ready to anoint every person that is standing in this room, Lord, to make them a living pistol. And those who are listening on the video from the, the, under the sound of my voice, God's saying, he said, he said, be silent. Be silent this day, saith the Lord of hosts. Be silent because the glory of the because God is because the glory of the Lord is risen. God is Jesus is rising up off of his throne right now. And he's going to take authority, Wayne, over your enemies. He's going to take authority over those who have held you captive. He's going to take authority over the forces of darkness. And he's going to, he's going to take what was meant for destruction, Marilyn, by the enemy. He said, I'm going to turn it around for good for you today. I'm going to change your direction today. And, and, and where you were once walking in a wayward way and, uh, and you could not hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. He said, today, he said, I'm opening you up this day. I'm opening up the windows of heaven. And I'm pouring my spirit out on you today so that you can, have, you can hear. So that you can have ears to hear and eyes to see. You'll be, I'm changing you today. I'm changing you, Marilyn. I'm changing you, Haley, into another person. I'm changing you, Stacy, into a living epistle. So that you will, you will never forget this day. That you'll never forget the opportunity that I have given you this day to stand and be and, and be and be what is it? Be, be steadfast, steadfast and immovable and unshakable in your faith today. Today you're going to have ground shaking faith. Today you're going to everywhere you walk, you're going to change the atmosphere of, of, of the environment when you walk into it. Why? Because if God be for you, 
who would want to be against you. And once God anoints you, and once God sets precedence on you, once he gives you, the title of the message today is called These Things. Once God gives you the real things that you need in your life to overcome, once th then you will be an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. Once you taste the Lord in your mouth, and once you and see that he is good, and that his mercy does truly endure to all generations, and that he is God and God alone, and besides him there is no other, then, then you know, there will be nothing that, will, that you cannot do. And the Bible says in Psalms 84 and 11, that no good thing, no good thing, things, no good thing will he withhold from those who what? Who walk uprightly before you, before him. Blessed is the man, and blessed is the woman who what? Who trust in him. Put your trust in God today. Turn your face toward God right now. God said, he said, tell him, Ken, turn your face toward God like a flint. You, it's time. It's time for you to take a stand. It's time for you to stand up. Stand up and see the salvation of God in your life. See God's hand before you. See the hand. Move the hand of God on your behalf. The Bible says you can command ye ye the hand of God to move. That's what it says in Isaiah 35. Command the God, the, the hand of God to move on your behalf and be like Jacob, Wayne, that when you come through the process and you come through the fire and, 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 you, and you come through the flood and all of a sudden you lose, and all of a sudden you, you, you come out of darkness and you walk in the light, even as he's a light, and your spirit is buried with us one with another, then you come to the camp of Mahananaim, just like Jacob did when he left Laban, his uncle. And the Bible says the, the Mahananaim is the camp of God where angels walk around. And the Bible said that because he was so blessed that whatever, everybody said whatever, whatever he had, whatever he commanded it to come before his hand came. Y'all not listening to him. Whatever he commanded, he thought his, he thought his brother Esau was coming to kill him with 400 men, men of war. So the Bible said he was going to give him a blessing to, to, to appease him. And he said whatever, yeah, he was so wealthy that whatever he asked to come before him came before him. And it, was, and it still didn't even scratch the surface of what God had already blessed him in. The things that God had already blessed him in. And see, you've got to realize something. That God spoke all of this in advance. How would you like to know that not, not only was the greatest thing that Jesus did, that I always say that with a caveat, what the, everybody says, what's the greatest thing that Christ ever did? He, well, he died on the cross with me. And I would say, well, yes, absolutely. I don't want to diminish that at all. It's the greatest it's the greatest act, the greatest gift, the greatest ransom, the greatest atonement could ever be was that, that God gave himself for mankind. But the other thing, the second greatest was that he, that he became human. That he became human and he walked on this earth and he spoke things in advance on the earth, prepared things to be here in advance. Power, demonstration, the anointing, the Holy Ghost, mercy, grace, his righteousness, his truth, his holiness, all provision, all authority, everything that he, all joy. Everybody say all joy. All the joy that he had when he walked on earth, he, he, he spoke in advance so that you, when we needed it, Haley, we could have it too. So how do you know that? Because it's in the word. When I came across it, I said, oh my God. I said, it's right here. He wants, somebody said, doesn't, doesn't God want you to be happy? Yes, he wants you to be happy, but I think it's in a different way than we conceive or think a lot of times. We think of happiness a lot of oftentimes in material things. And God wants you to be blessed materially too. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. But I think there's a different kind of joy that Jesus was talking about. He said, my joy, my joy, I, not the world's joy, my peace, my joy I give to him. So he says right here in John chapter 17, verse 13, he's talking to the Father and he's praying. And he's he's he's. Uh, he's setting the table. He's establishing in advance a new kingdom. A new authority on the face of the earth that had not been. You know, they all had power. When the, but they only had power when what? When the Holy Ghost moved on them in the Old Testament. But so you've got the Holy Ghost ruling and reigning and righteousness on the inside of you right now. you got the very essence, the very existence. The very divine nature, the very embodiment of God on the inside, the very power of God, the authority of God, the life, the life sustaining existence, essence of God on the inside of you before the foundations of the world. And once you accepted Christ in your life, you, you received every accolade, 
Every attribute, every, um, come on, Ken, every characteristic, every, every, every part, every, every asset of God's divine nature, everything that God, everything that God uh, has in Him, what's the right? Every resource that God has in Himself, you all, you have in you right now. So He says, verse thirteen. But now I come to you. He's talking to the Father. Everybody say these things. And these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. These things I speak into the world that they, if I say, say some, look, somebody say me, look to you, say, say me, he's talking about me, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. See, Jesus spoke in advance. He's talking to the Father, and he spoke these things. And I know that I'm sitting. I'm, you say, what things? I'm going to tell you in a minute. I know that everybody in here likes things. I know that everybody in this room likes nice things. That everybody, everybody likes to be blessed. Everybody likes to have more than one thing, don't you? You like to have things. You like to be lavished with things. You like to... You like to you like to feel like that you have what? That you have achieved many things in your life. That you have reached many goals. That you have prospered what? In all things. Anybody who says they don't like anything, they, they don't like things, but they're just not telling the truth, are they? Because everybody likes things. Everybody likes to have it. The only difference is, is what? If some, everybody's things is different from another, aren't they? The Bible says where a man's treasure is, everybody's treasure is different, isn't it? Where, where a man's treasure is, there his heart is also. But it also says, the common, the a more modern day say is where one man's trash is another man's treasure. What? Is another man's treasure. One man's trash is another man's joy. So, if we all like a, we all got different personalities, and we all like a variety of things, don't we? We all like to we all like to be blessed in the things that we like, and we like to feel like that when we get around people that they notice. You know you do that they notice that that, that, that it actually God wants you to know that most people know Haley that He's blessed you in many things, that He's blessed you going out, that you've been tried and you've been tested. To such a point that 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 you have that you have proven that the arm of the Lord is never too short to what to be touched by the feelings of your infirmities. That God knows what you need before you pray, before it's now on your lips, even before you even speak it up, before it's even in your heart. You want God to answer your prayers, don't you? You want God to meet your needs. You want God. To, you want God to, to establish you in this in this world. Why? So that you'll be both, both happy and safe. Everybody likes to be. He said, Brother Ken, does God want me to be happy? Absolutely. He wants you to be happy. He, want, he wants you to lack for nothing. Actually, absolutely. Actually. You say, can you prove that again? I sure can. Do we all do we lack sometimes? Yeah, but that's because we don't go through the process. Because James says that. What is that talk? What does that say? Holy Ghost. Let me see if I can find that real fast. Oh, I got it in my spirit. Never mind. The trying of your faith worketh patience. There's, there's, once you, once, once you're tried and tested in your reward, the Bible says, let faith have what? Let faith have its perfect work. I think it's James chapter three, y'all. Let faith, let faith have its let, let faith have its perfect work, or patience have its perfect work. Excuse me. That you you're what? That you're perfect and entire, lacking for nothing. God wants you to lack for nothing. Let me see if I can find that for y'all real fast, so you so you'll have it for later on. I think it's the two. Somebody looks at pay, let patience have its perfect work. James 
That's it. That's it. James 1 4. See there? So knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let, let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking for nothing. So he wants to make sure that you're complete, that you're lacking for nothing. So when we think about these things, he's not, all, he's not necessarily just talking about natural, materialistic things, is he, Haley? He's not just talking about you being blessed physically or monetarily, is he? Because he said he wants you to be complete, lacking for nothing. That means if you're complete, then your life's sustained. Then, you, then your life is sustained. So when Jesus says, he said, these things I speak into the world, that what? That they may have, that my joy may be fulfilled in himself. What is he talking about? He's talking about life-sustaining things. The very things, the same things that sustained him. Mm. That, that, made, that brought him joy. Now, God doesn't mind you having. God doesn't mind you being blessed. But the, but the joy, happiness and joy, you know, they're two different things. Happiness, you, your happiness is a fleeting moment. Ha, ha, ha. Happiness is a fleeting moment. But the joy of the Lord is your strength lasts forever. His, his mercy and his, his loving kindness, they endure forever. And you say, what are you talking about? Every, what he's talking about is, is Jesus is talking about an emotion of how you feel and, 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 and how and, 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 and what thoughts go through your mind. What emotional state are you in when you receive those blessings? Whether it's a big thing, whether it's a little thing, whether it's a small thing, then, then in everything that you do, in all things, what? In all things, in all things, what? Give, let there be praise unto the glory of God. Do you acknowledge Him? Do you find joy? Does it make you think about Him? Every time something good happens in your life, no matter how big or how small it is, does, does, it, does it cause you to reflect on your relationship with Him and find joy in it? Find joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. In other words, who... Who do you set your affections on? The Bible said if you set your affections on the things of the flesh, then guess what? Then you'll constantly think about... See, I'm, I'm try, I, I, God's taking me a different route this morning. If you set your affections on the things of the flesh, then guess what? You'll do the things of the flesh. Sometimes y'all wonder why... Uh, can I say that, Holy Ghost? You wonder why I go so... I, it takes so, I go so... My, my, a little bit longer than maybe I should sometime in the beginning... But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work through the things that you all the, that you've been through during the week with, with your mindset. Yeah. I'm trying to work where you've been. Now, if, if you if you've had your mind on the things of the world, and I'm not saying you don't have to go to work, David. I'm not saying you don't have, you're not busy. But 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 I'm talking about where where is your affection? Where's your treasure? Why do you do what you do? What 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 things in your life? Provoked you to to, 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 to to live the lifestyle that you live? Is it only when you get blessed with natural things and, and natural occurrences occur in your life? Or are you seeking ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Do you, do you, do, do you desire do you desire the glory of the Lord to surround you? Are you are you looking, are you creating a kingdom atmosphere in your life so that you can, every day you get up? That you can have, actually have an encounter with God on purpose. He said, "If you set your think, your affections on the things of the flesh, then you will do the things of the flesh. You will think on the things of the flesh. But if you set your affections on the things of the spirit, then you'll do the things of the spirit, and they will sustain you." Jesus said, "If Jesus said, I mean, the psalmist David said in Psalms fifty-five twenty-two, he said, those who stand before the Lord." He will sustain them and cause them that the righteous are, shall never be moved. That's where you get your true joy. You get your true joy. You get your true joy in the sustaining power of God. In the ability to establish His authority in your life. So that no matter what happens in the world, no matter what's going on around you, it doesn't matter if the enemy tries to come in like a flood. 
uh, this, I'm going to use this scripture again. But the, the, you know you got the Holy Ghost inside of you, Kenneth, that will raise a standard up against him. Yeah. That no matter what no matter what weapons are formed against you, they, they cannot prosper. You know that if God is for you, then who and what can be against you? That not depth, nor height, nor power, nor principality, nor things of the past, nor anything can do. That, that's, that's your true joy. That nothing can pluck you out of the hand of God. That's what Jesus was talking about. He wasn't thinking about the he, he wasn't thinking about the riches of the world, y'all. The Bible says in Psalm 24 and 1, the, the Bible says, Heaven is his throne. He owns it all anyway. Heaven is his throne, and the earth is a footstool in the fullness thereof. He was thinking about his father's sustaining love, his father's authority, his righteous authority, the fact that all power belongs to God. And that while, do I want you to be happy? Does he want you to be happy? Yes. He wants you to be blessed. Bar none. He want, I already said it. He wants you to be thoroughly complete. But it also says in 2 Timothy 3.17 that, that you may be thoroughly equipped for what? All good works. That you may be equipped for good work. These things. There's multitudes of things that God wants you to have. But everything should what? So it should surround or take precedence around, around his sustaining grace, around his mercy, around, around his, ever, his strength, his power, his authority, that everything what? Everything abounds from him. Everything comes from him. Uh, James says this also in that James chapter 1. Every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights where there is no shadow or turning. And all... all all the joy that Jesus, when Jesus said, I want them to, these things I speak into them. He said, hey, these things I speak into the world that they may have my joy, my joy in themselves. He's talking about the, the joy of the Lord, the, the same joy that he and the Father have, the same unity of the Spirit and the same bond of peace that, the, that they have as one. That we actually can walk in the same light as God in this in this downcast and dreary and, and gloomy place that we live. You said, but again, it ain't all that bad. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Everywhere you look, there's darkness. Everywhere you look, there's everywhere you look, there's evil. Man, I just saw just I read an article this morning just before I left the house. I told showed it to Stacy. One was a sad war. A man was a firefighter and he had to go uh, burning down house and and um, I'm just gonna go as far as the Holy Ghost wants me to go. And, and he goes over there, go to the he's a volunteer firefighter, you know, Kenneth, and he goes there and there's ten people and they're all his family. I'm talking about, you say, what are you talking about? I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about here in just a minute. That's what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to the place, talk about your covering. Yeah. Talking, about, talking about God's covering over you. Talking about this right here. And, and, and why you need the glory of God. Why you need the glory of the Lord around you. Why too many good, people always ask the question, if, if, God, is so, if God is so good, thank you Holy Ghost for reminding me of that. Why do good people die? Why do good people go for others? It, well, why does God do? Why did God, if God's such a good God, why does he allow all that to happen? It's also in James chapter 1. The Bible said God is not evil. You don't you remember this. God is not evil, neither is he tempted of evil. But man is drawn away by his own lust and his own enticement. Sure. So, so we're living in a world, a sin-cursed world. That unfortunately, that it rains on the just and the unjust, and unfortunately, good people leave this world. You know, and it's not because they. It, 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 it may not even be because I can. I can prove y'all down the road that a lot of Christians leave this world before they're they're supposed to. They leave this point. Why? Because they don't have their covering. They don't have that. They don't have that covering. They don't have that. They don't have the power, the empowerment of God. They don't have. That, the, that uh, outpouring over them that protects them from the cares of life, that sustains them from the things to come. So that guy had, ten, that had the, the place caught on fire. Ten people, ten people uh, were, I don't know if they, I, I don't want to say burned to death, but ten people lost their lives in that fire. And all of them were his family, little children, like three children, uh, three, four, three, four grandchildren, two uh, uh, mother-in-law, son-in-law, daughter-in-laws, a son, his own son was 19, all 10 of them. And then you go and you read an article and some guy kills a young man at the McDonald's, y'all, because his french fries were cold. 
Oh, killed a woman. No, a woman killed a man. Oh, was it a woman? Well, well, that was another one. No, I just read it yesterday. Okay, well, this one, I thought this one said man because, because he was talking to his mother, and the guy said, well, Mom, I got to, I got to do what I got to do. That's what he said. I got to do what I got to do. So, yes, there's evil in this world. So when Jesus was talking about things, he's talking about sustaining you, protecting you, watching over you, keeping you safe. May, may the glory of the Lord surrounding you and allowing you to reach your full potential until what? Until you're safe in the arms of the Lord. Until you're standing before the Lord of glory and all of his authority. That's what Jesus spoke. These things that, would in, that, that, that could inhabit, that, 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 that he could inhabit through, through the praise of his people and, and, and give his sustaining grace. You say, why? Nobody likes to hear this, but, I'm, but it's a different term. Because because Satan is walk because Satan is walking around like a roaring lion doing what? Seeking whom he may devour, what does he come to do? To kill, to steal, and destroy. I got to thinking about that. Nobody likes to hear that. That's that's a um, that's a one liner that Jesus coined right up front. That, that, that Satan comes he said, Satan comes but to kill, steal, and destroy. And I came to give life and give it more abundantly. But I got to looking at that, y'all. And I got I got a sneaky suspicion that, that Jesus just put that out there just to just to uh, allow us what just to just to put it's, it's like a, like a, you, you should be scared of the devil what you should be but if you're a child of God you should you should know you have authority over he it's just a point blank blank that, that, that to let people know well I don't want to go where he's at but I got but here's but but I got a suspicion when I when I began to study this that that's not entirely all what Jesus meant now that, now what Satan ultimately wanted to Will he ultimately want to destroy, kill, steal, and destroy you? But yeah, but I don't think that's his end game. Wayne, I don't think that that's, I don't think that's Satan's end game. I'll, I'm, not, I'm going to finish it right here in just a second, then I'll start it up next week. I don't think it's his end game. I believe, I believe, I, as, as, I, as I have studied this out, I believe what, what his end game is, is that, is that Satan wants to, he, yes, he, he wants to actually, Thoroughly, he wants to remove the image. When he means kill, steal, and destroy, he wants to destroy the value. Are y'all listening to me? The value and the image, the authority of Christ that is in you, so that what? Not only that, not only that you don't reach your full potential, but that you, your family and the generations after you, that nobody ever reaches their full potential. And that he literally, when you destroy somebody, see, I don't believe Satan is kind of this in your face kind of guy. I believe it's a, I believe it's kind of, unless it's absolutely necessary and somebody's, and he's, and he's trying to destroy somebody that's really taking authority over him. Yeah. But I believe he's, I believe he's, I believe he's, he, the Bible said he's subtle, that he, that he walks around as a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. So, so I believe that when he's talking about that, that he, that he literally wants to demoralize you to such an extent, the more to a place to where you feel empty, to where you feel defeated, and, and you feel and you feel you feel like you have been left alone. Somebody said that to me a couple of weeks ago. They said, "Man, I go in my bathroom, Ken, and and, and one of my relatives you say that all the time that God's just left us alone here, that you feel left alone, that God has forgotten about you, that He's that He's left you alone here to defend for yourself, to defend for yourself, and see." And, and, and try to live out your life, David, the best that you can. And see, that, and you say, what does that mean? And see, the reason why Satan wants to make you feel that way, this is, what I, this is my belief, and I'll prove it down the road. That I, the reason why I believe Satan wants you to feel that way, y'all, so that, that if we feel like that we're left alone, where, where the true, the, the, the true uh, kill, steal, and destroy comes from is he takes the very things the very life-sustaining thing, the very nature of God on the inside of you and causes you to lose what? Causes you to lose fear, have fear, and lose doubt that God is even for you or even on your side. So, that, so much so that when you lose that fear and you lose that doubt of who, of who God is and that he's actually, actually set you apart to, to, to allow his authority to completely work in your life, when you lose that fear and doubt, then because you don't believe God is there for you, then you'll do what? You'll do what? You'll go in other directions to try to find your joy, try to find your happiness. And see, what he's hoping is this. Can you prove this? Me and my wife are talking about this. What he's hoping is, is that, that you 
have no, what's the right word, Ken? Hope. You have no hope and no respect and no authority in God. That you actually turn your heart away from him and, and you, lose, right, you lose all hope in what God can do. And so doing so, it causes mankind to do what? Fall away from the presence of God. And you know what he's thinking, Kenneth, in the midst of all this? I, I told you, Mama, as soon as I had that, as soon as I said it, I said, it's, but it's like what he said to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. When, when they wanted to partake of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and what did they want to become? They wanted to become like gods. They wanted to become like God, didn't they? And, and when they went to partake of it, the, 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 the Eve asked, the, the serpent, Eve asked, told, told the serpent that what? That if we partake of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, evil will what? He said, you'll die. They, God said we would die. And the, what did the serpent say? He said, you will not die, but you will what? He said this, because he's a deceiver. He said, you will become like God, Marilyn. But you know what I think he meant? I think he meant that he said, you'll become like us. You'll become like us. You see, you can be sitting here. I'm, I'm going to close with this right here, and I'll, and I'll start back up with it. I'll, come, I'll, call, I'll start back with that again next week, okay? I'll come right back at that point right there, and I'll, and I'll, but I'll close with this. You can be born again. You can be born again and be filled with the Holy Spirit but still be naked. Still have no covering. Still have no protection. Still have no authority of God in your life. And that's what he... That's what that I believe. That is what the, the number one thing that I hope some of y'all, hope y'all can all come, y'all come back. Y'all want to hear the y'all want to hear the captivating points on this. The, the number one thing that Satan wants you to feel like is that he that that you you've lost your covering. You've lost your covering. Why? Because if if you no longer if you are naked, my wife said I'm not naked. I got clothes on. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about your flesh. All of your enemies can see your flesh. Yeah. All of your enemies can see your flesh. And see, before that, man, man had a covering and nobody could see. And you say, how can you prove that 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 that, that, that that's this? you say, why does he want you to lose your covering so that we can become like him? You know what he's want? What does everybody want, want from you? What does everybody what is what does everybody in the kingdom of darkness want from you? That you got that, 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 that they can't get. Your life. Yeah, yeah. What does everybody always want in the world when you make a mistake? Second chance. Second chance. He believes, and I'm closing with that. I just feel like the Holy Ghost says, stop right there. He believes. I'll come back to that again next week. I'll, I'll kind of back it up a little bit. Let's come back and start right there. I'm going to show y'all what God, what Jesus spoke in order to what? What Jesus spoke in, order, in contrast to it to neutralize everything that Satan is trying to do in your life. And then give you a covering on top of that. See, if he can make you naked like him and naked like the rest of the, the, rest of the elements of the earth and naked like the rest of the animals, and cause you to turn away from God, Marilyn, and believe that God's not on your side, that he's not for you, and that he's actually against you, that he's left you here all alone, and cause you to choose a different path, cause all of mankind to choose a different path, then you know what? It, I'll, I'll, I'll use an example. I'll, I'll bring in Job next week. I don't want to, say, I don't want to, use, I don't want to keep enough away. Then, then if, I, if I can get you to change and go and walk away from God, then I can go to, I can go to God as the sons of God, and I can say, ha-ha, look, see, you even made them in your image. You you made them just like you. You even offered them. You even gave your life for them. Yeah, you've even put your spirit on the inside of them, and yet they still won't follow you. We deserve another chance. No. Oh. I know I think different, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. We deserve another chance. We need a second chance. That's what that's that's his whole end game. Because he knows if he don't get it, he knows if he don't get it, he's 
He's in hell forever, and his hell's going to be cast into the lake of fire, which is seven times hotter than hell itself. Y'all can't even conceive that, can you? Where the flame is never quenched and the cankerworm is never destroyed, and that's hell. But hell's going to be one day, and all of his, the devil and all of his angels, and all those who have said no to God and yes to themselves, are going to be cast into hell. The hell, not just hell fire, but hell itself is going to be cast into the lake of fire. It's seven times hotter. And even that itself, I used to think about that. Even that itself is a, did you know even the fire itself is an act of God's mercy? You say, how in the world can you say that, Ken? How can you say that the fire in hell is an act of God's mercy? Because you feel it. Because you feel. You still feel something. You see the greatest, you see what people don't understand. They think that they think hell's not real. You know the greatest, you know what the the greatest punishment of hell is absolute darkness. Why? You said something, Eddie. You said what? Did, you said I said I said a second chance. You said what do they what do they want? What do they want that we don't? You just you don't even know what you said. What do they want that we don't? That, 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 what do we, that we have they don't have? Light. And hell is absolute darkness, and it, there is no such thing as absolute darkness. Did y'all know that? It's just absence of light. There's only true light. And it's, it's absence of all of God's glory, all of his goodness, all of his, the, the, these things, the joy, absence of all of the joy, all the joy that God's offering us right now, there's zero joy in, in hell. And the other thing is, it's, it's, there's, no, there's no relationship, there's no communion, there's no touching any, anyone else. It's absence of... Uh, What's the right word, Holy Ghost? I guess that's it. Isolation. isolation. The total isolation. There's no relationship with anybody. No family. No, no, there ain't no partying going on like everybody thinks. They go, mm -hmm. One guy told me one time we're going to get down there and me and, me and Satan, we're going to have a bud or some Budweiser with each other. I said, no, you ain't. I said, I promise you, you ain't. You ain't gonna, you're going to be totally isolated to yourself. No. Totally isolated in complete darkness all for all eternity. All the days of your life. People down there have been down there thousands of years. The angels have been down there millions of years screaming and crying out. Crying out for what? For the same relief, the same life, the same joy that I'm talking to you about this morning. Lord, what did the man, what did the what did the what did the rich man ask Abraham to do? What did he say? He said, he didn't ask for a bucket of water, Wayne. He didn't ask for a pail. You know what he said? He said, let Abraham. Dip his finger, just dip his finger on water. Just dip his finger and let him come and touch my tongue. He said, because my soul is a thirst in, 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 in flames. Just dip his finger on it. One moment, one moment of feeling of joy. Just to, just to remember what it felt like. And to lose it for all eternity. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just lift him up. I just went as far as you wanted me to go, Lord. I lift them up right now, God. And I pray that the Holy Ghost take this word and anoint it. Anoint them in this house, God. Anoint and let this word go forth and let it not come back void. Let it let it accomplish the task it's been set to do. And I just lift it and I give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. And I thank you, Lord, that you hear us when we pray. Amen.